kind of wondering how special your mom is to you. Yeah. Chris texted and said um, that the mom raised six or seven kids and dad was like um he traveled a lot for work and so he wasn't home a lot and so she had all the responsibility in the house he said but uh not just the coolest mom but also intentional gifted victorious like she would play, pray over them she would throw these valentine's parties just for her kids while dad was gone so it wasn't like just trying to get through the day you know, while dad was not in the picture while he was traveling for work, mm -hmm. but actually making it fun and interactive and really just making their lives amazing. Every day was special. Yeah. What a great mom. And seven kids? <laughs> mom is, is saint material here. Let right? me tell you. Super woman. Ooh, Chris, what a mom. Nellie's here at 800 447 7234. Nellie. What makes your mom so special? My um, spiritual mom, her name is Chilito. Back in the Philippines, all the things that I put her through is so much worse than her own kids combined could put her through. How'd she come into your life? She was my dentist. When I was working in the city in the Philippines, I was living with distant relatives but they were not really, like, kind. I got into talking to her that I told her I'm giving up my on-the-job training because I have nowhere to stay and I can't afford to pay a rent. And she said, well, why don't you just stay with me? She brought me to church. It was weird for me. She prays all the time. I actually call her the female um, Barnabas. You're in America now, so what do you do here? I've been living here for 17 years. I now have my own family. I have two daughters who rolls their eyes with me when I was I would dance or play with them, but they crave for it. They think I'm the coolest too because I make their dresses or I teach them how to cook. I tell them stories about how things were growing up in the Philippines. They couldn't believe it that I would tell them, oh, I grew up in a in a hut. So they think that's weird, too. But hopefully one day think I'm, I'm cool. Nellie Grace, you are a cool mom. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah. His morning crew. We're hearing from Victoria, and she says, when I have a bad day, her mom is so cool that her mom turns on a specific song, and we end up dancing it out and laughing, and Victoria says, my mom is my best friend. All right, cool. Victoria. I love that. Naomi also texted, and she said, my mom is the mother of five, and I love how she can take my mood changes and the chaos of the two younger sisters and just kind of turn that around. And when she's home, she watches movies with us and her mom even plays board games with them. Good for you. Oh, what a great mom. Lee's with yeah. us at 800-447-7234 talking about why mom is so special. What about you, Lee? My mom, when I was seven or eight, um, felt called after 9-11 to go back to school. She had gotten her undergrad in business but decided and felt called to be a teacher. So through elementary and middle school, she raised my brother and me while um, being in graduate school full time to teach. And then uh, she started teaching at an age where most teachers are retiring. And then through middle school and high school, she worked full time while supporting my brother and me in our school activities, helping us study for tests. Um, my senior year of high school, she got really sick and about died. Even through all this stuff happening where we thought she might not make it, she never let it show. Um, and she had a strong faith in God that, you know, things would happen according to his plan. Thankfully, she did recover. She's just been a really good example of what it means to be a mother. And without that godly example, I don't think my brother and I would be in the places we are now without her. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. Thinking about you and thinking about who you've been separated from for such a long time because of the pandemic. It probably had the FaceTime, the Zoom, whatever it is, but... There's been not that face-to-face, -face, the shake the hands, the hugs, all that stuff. So we're thinking at His Radio to help you with a reconnection 
to remember. So we have one story. You should see these entries that are coming in. Absolutely amazing, all these stories. But would love for you to have the opportunity to win a reconnection to remember. So tell us what that would look like for you. Text the word reconnection right now to 800-447-7234. Reconnection, 800-447-7234. Share your story, please. Yeah, Mindy said, if you look up best friend in the dictionary, you're going to see my best friend's picture right there. She's the only friend that I've kept in contact with over the past 35 years. Five states, we didn't see each other, or we haven't seen each other since February of last year. We live eight hours apart, and what we want to do is go camp by the lake in Atlanta. Nice. (laughs) Yeah. Well, good. Mindy, right? Yeah, Mindy. Uh, Mindy, I hope you win that. Oh, my word. Tell so you what. So much fun. If you have a story that's similar to Wendy's, or it could be a friend, it could be a parent, a kid, something, let us know what your reconnection to remember would look like. Go to our website, hisradio.com, the My His Radio app, or just text reconnection to 800 447 7234. Mornings with Rob and Liz. If you happen to see the NFL draft recently, uh, you may have stuck around for the number 24 pick. His name is Najee Harris, and he was a running back for Alabama. But even if you didn't watch it, not really into football, his story is pretty cool. He he grew up, uh, didn't have a great life growing up, had a lot of issues. Uh, his family was very poor. In fact, uh, during middle school, he had to live in a homeless shelter for a while but he overcame all of that he got into college at alabama was a big star in alabama of course uh he was picked up by the pittsburgh steelers in the nfl draft but you know that night when they're doing the draft and they're waiting to see which team is actually going to sign him usually there's a party going on so what Najee did was he threw a party for that homeless shelter that housed him that homed him back in middle school no way Right. I know he threw it for all the kids that were there. Yeah. And, Mm. you know, brought in the pizza and all this stuff. And uh, Najee even, you know, talked to the kids and the people that were there and said, you know, I could have been into all these things, gangs and drugs and that kind of thing. But football kind of saved my life when, you know, there were temptations. Other people would inspire him by saying, hey, man, keep on that track with football. That's going to get you somewhere. Keep on doing what you're doing. Good for him. He has heart. Yeah. You know, he could have he could have said, I got out of all that stuff, and now I can just do whatever. I'm going to get all yeah. this money. No, right. instead he's holding a party for the homeless people as he's becoming the number four 20, what, 24 draft pick in yes, the NFL. the 24, going to the Pittsburgh Steelers. And, yeah, he could have turned his back, but instead he said, I am grateful, and I remember where I came, came from, but look at me now. His morning crew. Did somebody do laundry in my mailbox? It's not a dryer. It's Robin Liz, his morning crew on his radio. This is a thing. So maybe this afternoon, this morning, when you go to the mailbox and you open the mailbox and you see, what in the world is that? That's not a piece of mail. It's a dryer sheet. Your mail carrier may have placed it in there. And I would encourage you to let it be. Just let it stay in your mailbox. Here's why wasps, uh, hornets, you know, bees, they they tend to build nests around mailboxes and they like to hang out. The dryer sheet kind of drives them away. They don't like things that are very aromatic oh. like that. And so they stay away. Look, I was attacked one time at a mailbox by a couple of wasps. <laughs> And so I'm like, leave the dryer sheet in. In fact, I'm going to go buy some so I can put them in my own mailbox to keep them away. But that's why the dryer sheet is in your mailbox. Can I just drape a dryer sheet over my house? There's like several places where the wasps want to go. I would say definitely take some dryer sheets, you know, put because they like around the gutters and in the corners. If there's any way we can just fashion that, that's going to look so strange, Uh but it will keep you safe. It'll keep you safe. The dryer sheet. Yeah. The new deterrent of wasps. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. Wayne and his neighbor are farmers. And they're meeting up right where the property line is between the two. And then Wayne says, no, the property line is here. His neighbor says, no, the property line is there. So they had this little oh, dispute. No. Wayne walks away. His neighbor walks away. Wayne comes back, oh, a couple of days later and notices there's a interesting fence 
all of a sudden it's on that property line. And the fence is, I know kids are in the car. How can I put this? It was a natural fertilizer. No. Yes. Uh Natural fertilizer. Big wall, 250 feet long. 250 feet of that fertilizer? Of that kind of fertilizer, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Where did it come from? Like, where? I, well, it, I, I, do I need to explain that to you? I don't think so. I know You know that where it comes from. That much is what I'm asking. Oh, oh that much. God. Well, the neighbor calls it a compost pile. Kind of. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's 250 feet long. just happens to be where he says the property line is. And the authorities came out, and they can't do anything about it because it's on private property. And, yes, there is a smell. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Hopefully you get, you have better response from your neighbors when you talk about property lines, but you know, as in this case. Get it worked out. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. You probably remember back, what was it, April, the beginning of April, the CDC said, you know what, there's a 1 in 10,000 chance now that you could get COVID-19 from a surface. That's what the CDC said. And so they kind of relaxed some of the uh, restrictions, especially for movie theaters. They say, you know what, you don't need to disinfect in between every movie. It's not necessary anymore. But you know what the movie theaters are saying? We're still going to do it. They are saying... Yeah, they are saying, you know what, we are going to still continue to do this. And I think I think it's good practice regardless. I mean, I'm glad to know as a moviegoer, an avid moviegoer, that they are being cleaned in between those showings because not just, you know, the germs that we're thinking about, but also sometimes there's popcorn butter <laughs> yeah. you know, on the armrests and things like that. So. Yeah, it's good. Like I, I belong to a gym now. I just joined Planet Fitness. My daughter had me say, had uh, said, join with me, Dad. Join with me. So I oh, did. That's cool. And yeah. so we kind of go to Planet Fitness on Saturday mornings together, and uh, that's a place where you have to, when you're done. I mean, it's always been a practice at a gym mm-hmm. that you clean up after yourself. You just right. don't leave the pile of sweat on the machine. Ugh. You Ugh. know, that's just disgusting. Please. You know, but now they got more spray and disinfectant spray and make sure that everybody is going to be safe. You know, so I'm glad a lot of places, even though it's been relaxed by the CDC, some places are saying, no, we're still going to do it because we're just we just want everybody to be safe. Well, they're in the practice. Why not just continue to do it? Make everybody happy and feel safe. Mornings with Rob and Liz. Reconnection to remember. It's Robin Liz, his morning crew on his radio. I love this opportunity that you have. You've been so far away from some people that you're used to seeing all the time. And now, well, it's like Zoom and FaceTime for a lot of people, maybe even you. So here's one thing you can do right now is share your story. What's the reconnection story that you would love personally? Reconnection, text that word, reconnection, to 800-447-7234. Who knows? You could have that reconnection to remember happen for you. Yeah, just like Christina, here's what she wants to happen. She is still at home with two of the kids, but three of her children have already moved out, and they are scattered around the country. And so her reconnection, she says, is to get all five of her kids and herself back in the same space, you know, like when they were little and just have that that fun together again. So who knows? That reconnection could be flying all of her children home from wherever they are in the country. So they could all be together again. Yeah. Man, yeah. Christina, I hope that happens for you. I so feel that I have two that are out of the house, three out of the house if you if you'd have my college student. So I still have one. And it's great to have them all together in one space. I so get that. So here is what you can do. If you would like to win a reconnection to remember, just text the word reconnection to 800-447-7234. Reconnection, just that one word. No emojis or the link won't get to you. Reconnection. Go to the website, hisradio.com, or you can surf right on over to the My His Radio app, and you'll be able to access it right there. His Morning Crew. Sydney is a young mom with a big job. It's Robin Liz, his morning crew on his radio. Not only does she have the humongous job of being a mom, she also is, get this, here's her title, 
global director of brand marketing for GE. And she has a two-year-old and twin sons that are six months old at the house and been working virtually since this whole pandemic thing had happened last March. Yeah, I can't even imagine doing all of that and then being the you know in this huge position for GE. But what she did, I guess at home one day working from home, she thought, "Hey, I'm going to add some of the skills that I've developed as a mom to my resume." And she said, "One of those things that I do is I fight ferociously on behalf of my team. And I think that came from fighting for her children. That has taught her how to fight for her team at GE. Um, also, she prioritizes integrity and honesty because as she's teaching, um, you know, those quality, qualities to her children, she's learned to do it better herself. So listen, I love this one. I love this one. I do everything you do, but I do it with one hand. Yeah, girl. You're right? <laughs> You got a kid in one arm. You got everything else that you can do with the other arm. I mean, she's great. She literally, because she's not really looking for work, what she did was updated her resume, and you'll see it on LinkedIn if you follow her on LinkedIn. And she replaced all of her skills with these skills. Well, yeah, of course, because the skills that she had before, having to navigate three kids, and especially when they're all that young, under two years old, you know, it just makes, it it adds to the skills she already had in a much different way. Multitask? Yes, girl. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. There's 16 in about four years, and then one. 16, four years, and one. But still the 16. And still the four years, and still the one. It's Robin Liz, his morning crew on his radio. I'm talking about Pete, who's fostered 16 kids in four years. He's adopted one, and he still is taking in a lot of kids. Oh, and it's just him. Yeah, and every time he gets the call, it seems like, he's like, sure, I've got the room. So he just took in, after he adopted his son, Anthony, he took in a 17-year-old, and then... He wasn't sure about the five and six year old that he got the call about, but he said, I've got enough room in my heart and in my house to take him in. So he did. Yeah, they're siblings. Got a complete bedroom makeover and everything. The reactions were priceless when these kids walked in. He's got like he's in Charlotte. He has a YouTube channel. A lot mm-hmm. of Peter people follow Peter because he's so inspiring, especially taking in all these kids like he does. He just wants to make sure kids are loved. Yeah, when he was younger, he had some issues. I think uh, there were times where he didn't have a place to live or he went through a lot of foster situations. And so he knows what it's like. And so he gives back in the best way he knows how. Peter, you're schooling us. You're inspiring us. Thank you so much for what you do. His morning crew. Now you got to look out for these things because hmm. people are trying to hack them. Vimno, the Cash App, Zelle. Those kind of apps, it looks like there's digital thieves that are invading them because they're so easy to hack. Oh, no, that just bothers me so much because so many people send money that way, and it's so convenient. Well, and the thing that's going on is they're easy enough to hack. They're saying that people are taking thousands of dollars, not just a $10 here or there transaction, but thousands of dollars. And so I was reading up on this a little bit, and there's a couple of things that they say you can do that will help. And that is to, one, the biggest one that I've read is to have a separate bank account just for those apps and just have enough money in to be able to use those apps. Oh, like a prepaid debit card or something like that. Use that just for, say, Venmo or Cash App. Exactly. So if you got Zelle, Cash App, or Venmo, that's what the experts are saying. They're saying, you know what? They're still going to be able to hack. It's not always foolproof. So mm-hmm. just have a separate bank account just for those apps. That way, you just put enough money in there, and people aren't like sucking your bank account dry where you have most of your cash for all of your bills. Just have enough for those, you know, those cash apps and another separate bank account. And mm-hmm. while people can still hack them, they're not, you know, drying out the account on you. I, I hate that we even have to think like this today, but I'm glad that there are people that help us protect what is ours.